Lost cities emerge from their past into the modern world with discovery and genuine excitement among archaeologists. And sometimes it's a real question on how or what or what the people did in this era lived. Like Atlantis. I know what the lost city of Atlantis had been one of the most regarded lost civilizations of the current times as many scholars and treasure hunters have scurried their way through thick jungle terrains, deep excavation beneath ocean floors, or watched the Disney movie a million times like Milo, disappearing looking for the lost city. According to the records of Greek philosophers like Plato, Plato marks Atlantis as a powerful and advanced civilization civilization that existed around 9,000 years before his time. Plato placed Atlantis beyond the Pillars of Hercules, commonly identified with the Straits of Gibraltar, which apparently placed Atlantis in the Atlantic Ocean. According to Plato, Atlantis was once a vast and wealthy island with highly advanced and harmonious society. The city was described as having concentric rings of water and land with a central island housing city capital and portraying with a powerful navy and militia force that apparently conquered other parts of the Mediterranean. The empire was so influential that they also conquered parts of the North African and parts of Europe, and according to Plato, the downfall of Atlantis occurred when the people ultimately fell out of favor with the gods due to their lack of moral character. As a result, Atlantis experienced massive floods, earthquakes, eruptions, and chaotic environmental phenomena that brought the whole of Atlantis into the ocean. Although probably it's best to say it might have been a work of fiction, Atlantis may have never actually existed, but the year 536 was a real year where historians noted as one of the worst years humans have ever recorded in early memory, with volcanic storms that lasted up to 18 months that covered the entire world in darkness. So maybe Atlantis Atlantis did experience the same and it did exist. But possible fictional civilizations, El Dorado was another legendary city that drove many conquistadors and historians rampant. Commonly associated with the city of gold, kingdom, or empire, its location has been noted to be in the Americas. El Rey Dorado was a term coined by the Spanish in the 16th century to describe a mythical tribal king of the Muisca people, an indigenous people of the Altiplano of Colombia, who apparently their initiation rite was to cover himself in gold dust and submerge into a lake. Because of the rumors and tales of of El Dorado ran around, desperate needs to uncover its location sparked several obvious unsuccessful expeditions in the late 1500s. Cities would then be raided through as indigenous lands would be turned upside down like Colombia, Venezuela, parts of Guyana, and Brazil. Most of the southern South America, including the Amazon River, was also scoured invasively. At the point of the 19th century though, colonizers alike decided the concept of the Golden City may have not existed. But to be honest, even if it did, I don't think the indigenous would care to give it up as much as homegrown farmers, considering that gold like maize or corn was more important. Many indigenous tribes identify with the tale of the three sisters, corn, squash, and beans, as they were more valuable and more imperative in the everyday usage than gold. But the legend of the seven cities of gold led to the conquistadors like Francisco to expedite across New Mexico, and tribes of the Aztec, Mayan, and Inca like the Musica were advanced, but either way, from myth to metaphor, the gold city is still left in history as the explorer's dream. Even now, there are still teams still trying to find it based off of original 1500 year old maps. But with the civilizations like the Babylonians, also known as the modern day Iraq, South of Baghdad was part of the most historic civilization as its historical significance dates back to the earliest second millennium BCE, and it became one of the most crucial and important cities in the Mesopotamia. It reached its peak during the reign of their king Hammurabi, who was famous for the codification of laws like the Code of Hammurabi. The land was noted as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and the hanging gardens of Babylon was said to be have built within the city, as well as the Tower of Babel, which has been noted constantly in biblical texts, of course, and as well as religious piracies. According to legend, its existence was comprised of humanity trying to build a tower to reach to the heavens, but God intervened. As a result, humans from this legendary tower were scattered and left to speak different languages, losing the ability to understand each other. But aside the legends, the Neo-Babylonian Empire was imperative as rulers like Nebuchadnezzar was known for his architectural achievements and reconstructions. After its conquest by the Persians, the contribution of Babylon being the center of learning exposed many scholars to mathematics and astronomy, as well as writing systems, many of which that we still use today thanks to them. Alongside the lost cities in Iraq brings us to another lost civilization in the Middle East, Persepolis, which once existed in the ancient Persia as we know now as modern day Iran. Founded by Darius I in the 6th century, the existence of Persepolis was so vibrant and beautiful in agriculture, design, and forts, the construction continued through many rulers as they built buildings and adorned intricate carvings, all that held significance in royal ceremonies and symbolic motifs. With many sections throughout the lost city, they had many religious, political, and important statues as symbols of imperial authority, but not a lot of people actually lived within the city. It was actually still pretty significant to the people, it just wasn't for them. It wasn't until the destruction caused by Alexander the Great when he invaded and demolished the city, apparently the spark of the flame burning the once great Persepolis to the ground left its leaders and citizens around in shambles. But despite the chaotic results of conquering, Persepolis or Persepolis remains as an important archaeological site and heritage site. Its ruins provides valuable information to researchers and helps taps into the indigenous culture and history of this once lost city. In Armenia, there was also once a remarkable lost city that was made up of 1,001 uh, that was made up of 1,001 churches, known as the medieval Armenian city of Ani. Once what? Let me read that sentence again. In Armenia, 
Armenia, there was once a remarkable lost city that was made up of 1,001 churches. Known as the medieval Armenian city of Ani, was once a thriving and cosmopolitan center. It is located in now modern day Turkey and still holds a fort near the border of Armenia. The 1,001 church complex city served as a major trading and cultural hub and was noted for its wealth, diverse population, and architectural achievements. The fact that there were so many churches of this once lost city marks a very integrated part of religious civilians that once roamed the place. The place included significant churches like the Cathedral of Ani and Churches of St. Gregory. However, the reasons of its abandonment was due to multiple invasions, earthquakes, and shifts in trade routes, and of course the devastation by the Turks in 1064. Eventually, Ani was abandoned and by the 14th century was completely deserted, but on the bright side, you can still check out the ruins. But there's still conflict between the Turks and Armenians on that. Speaking of ruins, Pompeii was for sure a lost city that had left a lasting impact in Italy, as well as note in environmental phenomena. Pompeii, however, wasn't just the only city affected by the massive eruption, as Herculaneum was the first to be affected. But when it came to Pompeii and its significance, it was a very popular tourist spot for Roman senators and Roman elites alike. Being formed as part of the Roman Republic, it also had politicians that didn't agree with Rome's delegation. And so you can imagine when the city was destroyed, it gave an advantage to political senators and the emperor to mock their demise on, see, that's what you get when you don't agree with us. But no one could have counted for Mount Vesuvius' eruption. When the African tectonic plates pushed under the Eurasian plates, the portion of the lower plate detached from the upper plate, which caused a window for the volcano to erupt. For over two days, the violent magma, lava, and ash it destroyed the once thriving Pompeii and left it under its soot till its rediscovery in the 18th century. When it came to discovering Machu Picchu though, it was noted it was part of the pinnacle effort of the Inca civilization and their architecture and engineering. Reserved as a royal state or even a sacred religious site for the Inca elite, it had significant exhibitions of sophisticated Inca stonework. The precisely cut and fitted stones forming the walls without a use of external fixtures gave a lot of innovative notes for engineers today. On top of a mountain 8,000 feet above a tropical forest offers spectacular views alongside the significant biodiversity, which honestly if you had a castle on top of a hill, it wouldn't be surprising why it held so much significance back then, as well as historical spots today. But when the Spanish conquest ensued, the Inca emperor and his citizens had to abandon their homes to avoid violent invasion. It wasn't until 1911 that the archaeological complex was made known to the outside world. Petra, also known as the inhabitants as Rakmu, is a historic and archaeological location in the southern parts of Jordan. Famous for its rock-cut architecture and water conduit system, Petra is also known as Rose City because of its beautiful, vibrant color of sandstone. Its conception was born by the hand of the Nabataeans as they were nomadic Arabs who invested in Petra as its location was important for trade routes. Reaching up to 20,000 inhabitants in growth was pretty good and they were actually able to trade with many civilizations like the Romans, but when they became a client state of the Roman Empire, they lost their independence and the Romans took over. Even their trade routes declined as there was an earthquake that shattered many structures and by the Byzantine era, several Christian churches were built, but still the population and city declined. By the early Islamic era, it was abandoned except by a handful of Arab nomads and it wasn't noticed on a wide scale until more explorers came to it. Still, it's noted as one of the seven wonders of the world. Although not widely known though, is its existence of a lost city left an important mark on those who lived it. Karakorum was once the home of the Mongols as it was the capital of the Mongol Empire. Now called Harahorin, the Mongols once used the fort as a safe haven as well. It's an essential city of the city of the Silk Roads as a trading system that connected continents from Far Eastern to China to Europe and the Middle East, and even extending to South and Southeast Asia as shown through the overlap of cultures mixed in Mongol society. From food to language to clothes to everyday uses, the city founded by Genghis Khan was an important development of our current times. Unfortunately though, because of the location of Karakorum had difficult environmental terrain, it couldn't be sustainable enough for 10,000 inhabitants in the city, especially if they couldn't import food from China and since they had tensions with China, despite several agreements and contracts in the end. Either way, Ogade, which is the son, the third son of Genghis, moved the capital away from the historical lost city, but either way it's still pretty cool to see where things came to be. Another lost city that you may have heard of or watched countless adaptions of is the city of Troy. Located in present day Turkey, Turkey, Troy was repeatedly destroyed and rebuilt during its 4,000 years of occupation. As a result, the site is divided into nine archaeological layers, each corresponding to a city built on the ruins of the previous. Troy was first settled around 3,600 BC and grew into a small fortified city around 3,000 BC. Being destroyed and built up again signifies its impact of the civilization of the people who lived there, and as a result, multiple excavations were made to find its remains. Due to its popularity over time, even mentioned in Greek philosophers, like in the Iliad, sets Troy in its final era of the Trojan War, where the legend goes and recounts a brief but crucial period of the Trojan War, a conflict between the city of Troy and its allies against the confederation of Greek cities, collectively known as the Achaeans. The major themes in Homer's epic poem, the Iliad, are revenge, war, and mortality, love and friendship, fate versus free will, and honor. The theme of revenge drives the plot from the beginning of the poem throughout to the end, and the Iliad is set during the Trojan War, but the conflict in the story isn't necessarily between the Achaeans and the Trojans, but between the Amagenina 
Athens and the leader of the Greek army and Achilles, the army's finest warrior. The entire fight was caused by their stubbornness and pride and Troy now exists as the present day Hisar Lake in Turkey and can be visited as a tourist spot. But of course, like all ancient civilizations, relics behave. And considering all the things that came to be, that's all for today. What was your favorite historical lost city and would you visit? Thank you for joining me and be sure to like and subscribe. My name is Jess and I wish you all the best. Bye.